Okay. I will wait. We will wait for some people to roll into the baking. <laughs> this is very, um, very strange with the new update though, because I can't see the usual notifications I get. Oh, hello, hello. Okay, we've got people clocking in. Good morning. Hello, Edo. It's not morning, is it, guys? It's afternoon. I should know that. Hello, hello. Oh, this is exciting. We've got people rolling on in. Jerry's here as well, guys. I'm going to show you Jerry. Oh, you're taking a nap, aren't you, mate? Oh. Oh, anyone doesn't know, <laughs> this is my favourite thing about 2020. Oh, of course it is. This is my baby Jerry. So Ian's here. Hello, Ian. Jerry says hello, Uncle Ian. Oh, is that your one? <laughs> he is very, very kissy. We love, we love our Jerry. We've got people rolling on in. This is brilliant. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hello, Miss Louise. Yes, the hair, guys, is red. <laughs> it's gone. It's gone very red. Woody says hi. Hello, Woody. Oh no, Debbie's in. And we know if you didn't do any of my Instagram lives during the first lockdown, you'll know that Debbie loves nothing more than to troll me on these. So uh, she is my mom. Don't worry. We let her. Um, we let her troll. So we will. We'll just give it another minute and then we'll do a little uh, ingredient roll call. It feels very strange to be back here on the baking side of things. Lockdown, lockdown 2.0. So I'm going to pity up, guys. I haven't done this in a while. It's been, it's been a while. Jerry's excited now. Jerry's here. You, you just want to eat my apron, don't you, mate? Absolutely. Okay, so we've got some people in. This is good. We'll get cracking. We'll get started. So... We're gonna do a quick little um, ingredient roll call. She's got her pinny on. Make sure you've washed your hands. I'm gonna quickly just do mine over here while I'm talking to you as well. So we've washed our hands. We've got all of our ingredients ready. We're gonna do a quick ingredient roll call. We're gonna get through the oven temperatures and all of that jazzle. Um, the best thing about brownies though, guys, is you can literally make them how you want them. So you can put whatever you fancy in them. I personally love peanut butter brownie or like a good salted caramel brownie. If you've been watching Bake Off, they did brownies in one of their challenges, but there wasn't a, wasn't a strong challenge, was it? So we are making brownies. I think today I've got a few ingredients, so I'm just gonna throw some stuff in and see what, um, see what happens with my secret ingredients. However, quick, quick roll call, here we toddle. Make sure first you've got um, your equipment that you need as well. So we are gonna need some scales and some bowls to measure out our ingredients. If you're like me and you need a coffee to help you through the day, make sure you've got your cup of tea or coffee as well. Um, we are also going to need either a saucepan because we're gonna to have to melt the butter and the chocolate together. Or if you don't have a saucepan, you don't wanna do it over the hob, par exemple, um, you can always do it in the microwave. So just a bowl that you can put in the microwave as well. Aside from that, let's get down to the stuff. Now, mixing bowl, obviously, um, I'm going to use my lovely KitchenAid, my big red, who is parked right here, and a whisk. So you're going to need a whisk or a spatula or a wooden spoon. Either of those will do. So cracking on to the good stuff now. Let's talk about ingredients. So you're going to need 125 grams of butter. Yes, Ian's having a Bloody Mary. That is completely acceptable, Ian. You know it is. Um, 125 grams of butter. You're also going to need 150 grams of plain chocolate. So you can use dark chocolate, you can use milk chocolate. Dark chocolate will work better. The higher the cocoa portion, the easier it is to work with in cooking in general because there's less fat in it. So I've got my 70% co-op friendly here. So 150 grams of this we're going to need. You're also going to need 40 grams of a cocoa powder, exciting, um, just cocoa powder, 200 grams of sugar. Now, it does say caster sugar in the recipe, but if you have granulated sugar, if you have brown sugar, if you have um, soft light brown sugar, golden caster sugar, coconut sugar, you can use any sugar, it's absolutely fine. You're also gonna need three eggs, tres, tres huevos in Spanish, if you will, three eggs. So I've got some, uh, some large free range British eggs here. 
And we're also gonna need 75 grams of plain flour. So just plain flour. And we are also going to need 100 grams of your extras. So whatever's gonna make your brownie a little bit of you. Maybe you wanna do Biscoff, maybe you wanna put Nutella, maybe you wanna go completely off a tangent and put um, rich tea biscuits or bourbon cream biscuits or cus I actually had I had a custard cream brownie once and I won't lie to you all it was lovely um so whatever you fancy that makes your brownie a bit of you there's a hundred grams of that so the first thing we're gonna do before we crack out on to any of this someone says how is your puppy he is very well he is taking a little nap right now and I'm sure Jezza will be back so we are going to very very first preheat our oven so oven temperatures. I've missed this bit, the whole calculating. If you have a gas mark oven, if your oven has a little dial with numbers one through to eight or nine on it, we're going to put it up to gas mark six. So gas mark six. If you don't have a gas mark oven, you want to use 180 degrees. If you're just using a normal gas oven with a fan, I believe you can get those. Or if you have an electric oven, I completely got those the wrong way around. Ignore me, it's been a while, guys. So you want either gas mark six, you want 200 degrees on a normal gas oven, or if you have an electric fan, you want to use 180 degrees. So I'm gonna go quickly and preset my oven, ready for those brownies to go on in. An old baking tray there, that's lovely. Da -da -da -da. Fabulous. So again, gas mark six, 200 degrees if you're other gas, or if you've got an electric fan, that's 180 degrees. So hello, Miss Jade. I'm um, moving on now to the ingredients. So what we're gonna do in a bowl is measure out the butter and the chocolate. So we again want 250 grams of butter. I totally lied, 125 grams of butter. I'm smashing through it today, aren't we, chaps? So 125 grams of butter. This recipe, by the way, makes 12 brownies, which is all good. So if you wanna make 24 brownies, you really, really like brownies, or you're cooking for a big household, then, uh, then you can double the recipe. But for now, we're just gonna make the 12. So 125 grams of butter. We are going on in there. She says, we're gonna melt this, guys. So the butter and the chocolate is going to be, to be melted together. How lovely. Let's do this. Ba -ba. And, oh, so close, guys, 123. So, so close. So once you've got your butter, she says, I'm, I'm dicing with accuracy today, guys. 125 grams of butter in your mixing bowl. We're then gonna add 150 grams of your chocolate. So again, if you have milk chocolate or you have dark cooking chocolate, I would maybe stay away from white chocolate because it can be a little bit um, a little bit tricky to work with because it has a higher, a higher fat content. So usually when you work with white chocolate, I believe you have to substitute and use less butter. I think that's right. I'm pretty sure they said that on Bake Off. So what you wanna do is just uh, break your dark chocolate into small little pieces, because again, we are gonna melt these. So the smaller the pieces are, the easier they are going to melt. Someone says, making my isolation. Oh no. How long are you having to isolate for? Is anyone else having to isolate there? Let me know if you are. This will give us something. Someone's gonna say, I'm going to be twice the size after this. No, you won't. Go for a, we'll go for a nice afternoon walk and you'll be fine. So, she says, I have in there 100 grams. I've got another 50 to go. So, that sounds about right. It does sound about right. All of the chalky. I also wanna know, what are you guys going to put into your brownies? This is very exciting. What, what's going in your brownies? What's your ideal brownie? So, I'm almost there with the, with the dark chocolate. How much have you been loving the beach walks? I have been absolutely adoring the beach walks. I go with my puppy twice a day, once in the morning, once in the afternoon, 
and it's lovely and it's actually really nice to just socialize with the other doggy walkers as well it's nice to it's nice to speak to people outside of the household highly recommend it so we've got now in our mixing bowl someone's doing peanut butter and strawberry jam yes peanut butter jelly i like that so either you've got two options here you can melt the butter and the chocolate together in the microwave i would do it in 30 second intervals take it out after each 30 seconds give it a quick little stir if you're like me and you're going to put it into a saucepan i'm going to take this over to the hob just because it's easier for me to carry on chatting to you guys and uh doing this at the same time i'm going to try my very hardest to multitask i'm going to take you over here step into my office Oh, it's very dark in this corner though. There we go, a little bit of light there, how lovely. So I'm going to pop this over a sort of low to medium heat. I feel like I'm doing a sort of cut budget cooking program here for you all. Oh, lockdown. Right, and once you've, uh, if you're using a saucepan, just pop that saucepan over with the butter and the chocolate and we're just gonna wait a couple of minutes and then we will get, we'll get, we'll get stirring and we'll get mixing that melty butter and chocolate together. Let's see who else, what else we're putting in. Someone's putting biscuits in their brownies. Brilliant. I do, I do like a good biscuit brownie. I'm not going to lie. What else have we got going in our brownies? Definitely some peanut butter. Yes. I genuinely believe that peanut butter is one of the greatest gifts that um, humans have created. I'm pretty sure it was a human that invented peanut butter. I might be wrong. It might have been a monkey, but I'm going to go with a human. So, like I said, if you are melting your chocolate and your butter together in the microwave, 30 seconds at a time, wait those 30 seconds, take it out, give it a stir, put it back in. Eventually, after about three or four sort of bashes, <laughs> bashes at the microwave, um, you should have some lovely melted peanut butter and chocolate together oh this actually smells really really naughty guys it's quite nice though i do enjoy i do enjoy a good a good dark chocolate someone says i have no kitchen to bake in and this makes me sad that is very very sad how come how come we have no kitchen let me know i don't think i could live without a kitchen i think i'd go absolutely bonkers well they're saying that i worked on cruise ships for five years and you don't really have a kitchen there so but there was this one time on the Queen Mary 2, they let me in the galley to bake cupcakes for the crew, and that was lovely. I very much enjoyed that. I don't think it was very legal, but what happens at sea? It's all right. It's all right. So, butter here and the chocolate is coming together very, very nicely. You basically just, if you are mixing it over a low to medium heat, you basically just want to keep stirring until it's all, all smooth together. I will have to this one at home as my uni kitchen is no good for baking. Oh, yes. Well, the great thing about this, guys, I will pop the recipe up on my highlights with some instructions. And I will try and save this video as well. So it will be an IGTV, I believe, as the kids call it these days. And uh, then you can access, access the recipe at all times. Brilliant. So my butter and chocolate has melted together. Very, very lovely here. A little bit of liquid joy. So I'm going to bring you back over back over to where the good light is or where it was before the absolute rain has descended i don't know if, where, whatever it's like wherever you guys are in the uk but it it started off beautiful this morning and then it just sort of slowly descended into chaos of rain so brilliant anyway um i have we have here our melted butter and our chocolate together so in your measuring bowl we are going to measure out that 40 grams of cocoa powder so 40 grams if you don't have cocoa powder actually hot chocolate powder is a fairly decent substitute for this little uh, a little fyi i'm gonna change my scales up so it actually works here we go so 40 grams of cocoa powder we are going in here lovely lovely where have i got to 34 so close beautiful there we go so once you've got your 40 grams of cocoa powder i'll try and balance you a little bit more even there oh there we go lovely we are going to this is where it gets really really fun in your measuring bowl in your measuring bowl in your bowl with the butter and the chocolate 
just make sure that you've got a sufficient amount of space because we are going to pour in the cocoa powder and we are going to mix this in so it goes nice and glossy. So I'm just using a spatula. You can use a whisk, you can use a wooden spoon, you can even use a fork. What you wanna do is give it a nice little mix. Make sure, little mix, hey, great band, aren't they? Um, see about the puns, guys, the puns are coming here. So making sure we mix this together and we should have a nice glossy sort of chocolate buttery mix. How are we all doing? Give me, hit me up with any questions if we have any as we're going. Someone says, who's your favorite in Strictly this year? Well, you know what? Last night, I was losing it at my television. I thought there were some absolutely cracking routines last night. I so, so enjoyed Karen and Jamie Samba. I thought that was absolutely just, I was smiling from ear to ear, cracking. Um, I also really, really enjoyed Bill Bailey and OT doing hip hop. I thought that was absolutely brilliant, their street commercial. Um, there were so many good routines. Jeanette and Harvey Salsa was incredible. I genuinely don't think there was a dodge, a dodge routine last night. And speaking of, here comes Miss Katia Jones. Here she is, Miss Katia. How are we, my lovely? Your ears must have been burning because we were just saying what routines we loved on Strictly this week. So. What we're gonna do, you should have mixed here. Ooh, very, very lovely. We've got the melted butter, your melted dark chocolate, and you've mixed in your cocoa powder there as well. So we've got a really nice runny, chocolatey, gorgeous, gorgeous mix there. So we're gonna leave that for two, uh, a couple of moments, and I'm gonna pop you up here so you can see a little bit better. Beautiful. So we've got that chocolatey mix. We're just gonna pop that to one side. Now in your mixing bowl, you want to get your whisk. So, not a samba whisk or a waltz whisk, a mixing whisk. So, I'm gonna move <gasps> Big Red here. If you are like me and you're using a electric mixer, you want to make sure that you've got a whisk attachment. If you've got a mixing bowl, then you just wanna use a good old whisk or a fork or even just a wooden spoon and you can beat it very, very fast. So, we are going to put into this mixing bowl the sugar and the eggs. So three eggs are going into this bowl. This feels like, Katia, it does feel like the first lockdown all over again. It feels very, very strange, except we have, we have a little bit of Strictly Magic on our Saturdays to keep us going Ooh, through the winter. Ooh, I've cracked a little bit of eggshell into my bowl there, so maybe don't do that like me. So one egg, two egg. So again, we want three eggs going into this bowl. Da, da, da. Katia, are you baking along with me? I hope you are. That would be fab. So we've got our three eggs, tres, tres huevos, if you will, and then we are going to add in our sugar. So 200 grams, I believe, yes, 200 grams of sugar going into the bowl. So I'm actually gonna mix things up today and I'm gonna do 100 grams of sugar and 100 grams of dark sugar, because why not? It doesn't just have to be caster sugar. If you want to use a, a health alternative, coconut sugar is really, really good because it gives you a really nice caramelly texture. Basically, the darker the sugar, the more caramel, the more caramel notes that you need, uh, that you can get even from it. Let's go back to grams there. Lovely, so 200 grams of sugar, we are cracking in. Katia, you don't have cocoa powder. That's okay, Katia, you don't need cocoa powder. You can always use hot chocolate powder. That's a nice little alternative, or you can just wang in an extra 40 grams of flour, um, and they might just not be as rich, which is fine. So a nice little substitute there for you. Right, uh, lovely. So I've gone for 100 of golden caster sugar, and I'm also gonna put in 100 grams of dark muscovado sugar as well. Da, da, da. Katia, I will do your carrot cake one day because I know how much you love carrot cake. In fact, we should do a baking together and make carrot cake. That would be a cracker. And uh, I'm gonna pop in. So if you're just using plain carter sugar, you've probably measured yours out quite a bit quicker than me but that's okay. I'm mixing it up today. I'm being a rebel in the kitchen. What can I say? There and lovely, lovely. So you've got your 200 grams of sugar and you've got 
your three eggs. Now we're gonna mix these up together. So again, if you've got a um, mixer, if you will, with a um, electric um, plug, that you, if you've got an electric mixer, that's what I was going for there. Brilliant. Um, <laughs> if you've got an electric mixer, use a whisk attachment or a paddle attachment, it's fine. And I'm gonna whisk them now on a sort of low to medium speed. If you're going manual on this, working out those guns, give it a good little whisk. Um, it's probably gonna take about a good two to three minutes of whisking if you're going manual. Probably about a good 30 seconds to a minute if we are going here. Yes, Miss Cassia doing my carrot cake recipe. I'm so glad that you liked it. Someone said, can we do beans on toast? Yes, we can always do beans on toast. I love beans on toast. Do you know what? I haven't had that in so long. It's always a good shout for beans on toast if you cover it in cheese, I find. <laughs> in fact, if you cover anything in cheese, I think it's, it's great. So, you want to whisk these together, the, um, the sugar and the eggs, until it becomes really, really light. And sort of as you peel the whisk away from your mixing bowl, if you're going by manual, you'll have little strings of ribbon coming off your whisk. And lovely. Let me know if we have any more questions, guys, as we're going along. We've got our oven preheated. If you haven't, don't forget, gas mark six. 200 degrees on a gas oven or 180 if you're using an electric fan. We've already melted in our saucepan the butter and the chocolate together. We had 125 grams of butter, 150 grams of dark chocolate, and then we also stirred in 40 grams of cocoa powder. That's still hanging out over there, still chilling. She's coming in in a minute. And then in the mixing bowl here, she says we've got 200 grams of sugar and we have three eggs as well. Lovely, lovely, lovely. In fact, I'm going to have a quick sip of coffee while I wait for this to, to go as well. So, just waiting for the sugar and the eggs. You want to make sure that it is really, really nice and light because that's going to add a lot of air into the brownie. We only have plain flour. We're not using any self-raising. So the more air we can get out of our eggs, the better. It's all science, isn't it, baby? It's actually quite interesting when you know what you're talking about. I'm still learning, guys. I'm still getting there. So, I think that looks fairly decent. Do you know what? While I wait for that to go just a teeny, teeny, teeny bit more, we're going to measure out the flour. So, in a little bowl, which I'm going to go and grab from over here, Bowl. We're going to measure out 70 grams of plain flour. So again, if you don't have plain flour, that's okay. You can use oats is a good one that Katya actually taught me during the first lockdown. You can get oats in a food processor, really, really blend them until they're really, really fine and that's an oat flour. Or you can use coconut flour, you can use almond flour. It doesn't necessarily have to be your stereotypical flour. So. We only want 75 grams of plain flour. 75. So I'm going to pop those. That's really not a lot, actually. It's about two large tablespoons, if you will. 75 grams. There we go. Lovely, lovely. I'm going to stop that mixer right there so happy happy days so as you can see that mix of the eggs and the sugar is super super light so as the whisk comes out of the mix it's almost um like thin thin little ribbons if you will so i'm gonna pop that ooh, in my bowl and i'm going to discard of this ooh. well they're quite heavy to move the old kitchen aids so you've got in your in your mixing bowl You've got the eggs and the sugar that we've whisked together. Now, next step we're going to do is we're going to add in our chocolate mix. So that lovely, lovely dark chocolate that we melted with the butter and ooh, our cocoa powder, we're gonna pop on in. So I love using spatulas for this kind of stuff just because you can really um, sort of wipe around the edge of the pan and really get the get the most 
because there's nothing worse than when it all gets stuck to the bowl is there and you're thinking god should that have gone in the in the cake mix however you do also get to lick the bowl and that is probably one of the best things about baking which debbie will tell you it's her favorite part of baking so making sure la 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 we are all out lovely jubbly and i'm just gonna make sure that's okay always taste as you go you know what you're popping in to your food bowl so once that's gone in we're gonna stir so you've got a lovely should be looking quite runny which is totally fine and it should be looking a nice sort of dark chocolatey color Ooh, oh, oh. so say so the more you stir it the darker it will go someone says where is debbie she is actually she's been quite a silent troll she might be taking a nap who knows so still stirring Ooh. that mix in once that's all integrated together we are going to add in our 75 grams of flour so i'm gonna add that on in Ooh. and we are going to give that a really nice mix again you can either use an electric mixer if you want to mix it and beat it in here i'm just going to fold it in using a spatula you can also use a wooden spoon you can use a metal spoon you can use a whisk whatever you fancy doing it's just to mix in that flour it should thicken it slightly it's still going to be quite runny and it should be quite rich now says hope you're well count thank you very much miss natalie i hope that you are well as well she says i forgot how much of a workout this was on the old biceps on the old arms if you will the baking workout oh that would be fun wouldn't it a baking workout and you get good cake at the end of it so like i said it's all mixed together it should be quite dark quite rich and uh nice and nice and fudgy gooey i think they're gonna be some good brownies guys so We've got our mix. I'm gonna leave it to stand now just for a few minutes. So while we do that, we are going to prepare our baking tins. So <laughs> I would say here's what I've made earlier, but I have not made one earlier, I'm afraid. So I am going to, because I don't have any greaseproof paper. So if you have greaseproof paper or baking parchment, what you wanna do is just line your baking tin with your baking parchment. Brilliant, easy done. So because I don't have that. Good golly, I don't know if you can hear that <laughs> weather report coming in with baking for you. Uh, we've got hailstones here in Dorset. How wild. Winter is coming. Um, brilliant. So if you're unlike me and don't have any baking parchment or greaseproof paper, I'm going to manually grease my tin. So some kitchen roll here and just some butter at room temperature. I'm going to put the butter around all of the corners here so this is absolutely foolproof if i'm ever baking anything in a tray or in a tin i will always grease my tin like this my great grandma taught me how to do it many many years ago and it's not failed me yet <laughs> today will be the day you need to be a weather presenter oh that could i could do that i can't guarantee i'd be very good because i'd probably be pointing at the wrong side of the green screen Geography is not my strongest point, unfortunately. I'd be pointing at Scotland, calling it, you know, Wales or Ireland or France. Anyhow, what I'm going to do is whoop, show you that. So we've greased the tin there. Now the next step, just to make sure that it is even more foolproof, I'm going to add just a little bit of flour. Someone says, it's sunny and windy here in Kiel. See, Kiel to me, is that, are you... Is that near Liverpool? This is when we're going to find out just how good my geography is. In my head, you're near Liverpool, but I might be, be very, very wrong. Tell me where, 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 where are we close to? Let me know. So in the meantime, I'm going to sprinkle just about a tablespoon of flour. I'm going to give it a couple of little taps, ding, ding, on the surface. And we're going to whisk it a little bit around, get that body going. And then also just tip onto the sides just to make sure that you really cover she says all of the um you want to basically make sure that it looks like it's been dusted Ooh, there we go. lovely bubbly so it just looks like it's had a nice little frost all over the cake tin and this will just make sure 
that the brownies don't get stuck. I'm gonna sprinkle just a little bit of flour just because you can never be too careful. So I'm gonna leave that tray over there to the side. I'm gonna quickly wash my hands because I seem to have got a lot of flour all over my work service. I, for some reason, went to Scotland very briefly for you there. And oh, I'm gonna pop this flour in the bin. Craig Webb Music has joined. Craig Webb, talk to me, darling. How are you? If you haven't, guys, if you don't know who he is, Craig Webb has the voice of an absolute angel. So you can look at him on Spotify. Craig, Craig, Webb, W-E, double B. He's got a couple of singles on there that are just absolutely beautiful. He writes them himself. He records them himself. Absolute voice of an angel. Some, okay, we've just got back to me. Keel is north near Stoke. Now I know enough to know that Stoke is not near Liverpool, so <laughs> maybe the weather presenter will uh, will, will be a, a slow, a slow, um, a slow learning curve for me. So da, da, da. just cleared that up. Now the only thing that we've got left to do is prepare our extras that we uh, want to put in. So however we fancy going with this today, guys, you've got a hundred grams of extra allowance. We've got someone, I know where Swansea is, that's in Wales, I know that. South East Wales, I know that one. In my head I always hear never eat shredded wheat. If you're the same as me, then we, then we, then we totally know. Um, so I, <laughs> she says, have here, I have some double deckers. Debbie's favorite, Debbie loves a double decker. I also have some honeycomb pieces. Um, I have, this is Karen's favourite actually, the dairy milk with Oreo, she's a big big fan, I might pop some of that in, um, and I've got peanut butter, so I'm probably just going to go, just probably going to go a bit wild with it if I'm honest, so what I will do first is, ooh, yeah, I'm going to cut my double decker up, so like I said, however you want to, however you want to decorate these guys, decorate, fill them, flavour them, everything is your choice here. So I'm going to cut my double decker just into some nice um, small bits because I don't know if having a whole chocolate bar and a brownie is a good idea. Although saying that, if I got a brownie and it had a chocolate bar in it, I think I would be absolutely thrilled. Um, I'm not lying. So I'm just going to cut those <laughs> into smaller pieces. Milky Way and a brownie would be dreamy. That would be good. That would be really, really nice actually. Um, guys, let me know as well, even if you're not baking along today, if you could have anything in a brownie, what would your dream brownie be? What would you want to pop on in there? I'm still cutting these into very, very small pieces. So what I'm going to do, this is getting very exciting now. I'm going to grab my tray. If you're just going for a solid, a solid one direction on it, a solid one filling of one extra, I would pop those extras into your bowl and mix away so it is nice and evenly incorporated. I'm going to pop the double decker in there. If you are going for a variety of toppings, you can always pour your mix into different bowls and add different, different little bits. That's always fun. We've got... Ba, ba, ba. Guys, if there are any questions as well, as we go, pop them in. I think I've got a little bit of allowance for a, a bit more double decker. Why not? You always want a good ratio of filling in a brownie, don't you? Always want a good ratio. There we go. I've just seen, do I know where Northampton is? Yes, I know where Northampton is very well. I've been to that theatre multiple times. It is just north of London <laughs> on the M1. <laughs> I know that one. So once you've mixed in those ingredients, make sure they are nice and evenly distributed in there. We're going to put them whoop, into that lovely lined baking tin. Now your oven has been preset. So all of the hard work is already done. It's already preset in there. And then just really make sure that you scrape down the sides of your mixing bowl. Maybe save a little bit in there because it is it is quite nice to um, it's quite nice to lick the bowl out. 
Um, where have we got? Do I know where Ellsbury is? Um, Ellsbury is near Buckinghamshire. I want to say, I might be wrong. Um, I'm going with Buckinghamshire. Strong and wrong, Buckinghamshire. It's in Buckinghamshire. Um, if I ever go on Mastermind, <laughs> UK towns is not going to be my specialist subject. So mixing oh, and scraping everything out of the bowl there. And then once you put it into your da, 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 into your tin, make sure that you've got your filling evenly dispersed because there's nothing worse than when one brownie gets all of the all of the chocolate pieces in and the other brownie gets none. That's that's sad. Sharing is caring, guys. We have here Albert, it is near. Yes, I knew it. Praying Bournemouth Fire Dance goes ahead. Me too. I am so excited to get back to Fire Dance next year. We were cut short this year. We were robbed. Thanks to <laughs> thanks Corona. So I am beyond excited to to get back to performing on a stage. So once that's done, I'm actually going to go a little bit extra, I think, and I'm going to put some. She says. The, that I think I'm gonna add some dairy milk Oreo as well. It is all very very exciting on my brownie front, guys. Let me know what else, what else is because I'm getting really carried away here on the brownies. Where did the cocoa powder go? Um, so the cocoa powder it got mixed in with the melted butter and dark chocolate. But if you didn't do it with that, that's absolutely fine. You can always just pop it in with the eggs and the sugar as well. I'm going right in on these today. These are, these are going to be very, very naughty brownies. Oopsie daisy. Oops upside your head, so oops upside your head, if you will. Uh, let's pop this there. Getting very carried away here, guys. Um, why not? So, once you have all of yours, uh, all of your brownies assembled. See, this is when I go too far and I go, should I put some honeycomb pieces? But I think that might be a bit excessive. So I'm gonna leave, no, don't do it, Katie, leave it there. So, as you can see, I have here, some, someone has said, have we added the extras? Yes, so the extras are the last, last thing to go in. So I've added some double decker and I've mixed it in with my brownie batter and then I've popped it on in. And then I've added a little bit of dairy milk Oreo on top as well, mainly so I know what size I'm going to cut them. And then every, every brownie will have a gorgeous little square of Oreo chocolate. So once they are assembled, if you will, they are going to go into the oven. So it's been preheated already. You've either gone to gas mark six. 200 degrees if you're using a gas oven or 180 degrees if you are using an electric fan oven. So once they've gone in, make a note of the time. What you want to do is bake them for about 15 to 20 minutes. What I would do is set a timer for about 15 minutes time. Go and check on them. You want to make sure they've got a little bit of a crust on the outside of the brownie, but you still want them to wobble a little bit. If you're like me and you like a really gooey brownie, if you don't like a gooey brownie, then forget what I've just said and go, go and keep checking them until they are cooked all the way through. A brilliant way to check if they are cooked is to get either a knife or I personally really enjoy a little cocktail stick um, and you literally just dab it into the brownie and if it comes out clean then it means that it is indeed cooked all the way through so I mean I won't stay on and natter your ears off for another 15 to 20 minutes while these cook but I will quickly set a timer on my oven so I can make sure that I check them so like I said anywhere between 15 and 20 make sure it's got a nice little wobble to it wobble wobble as you uh as you push the trolley, the running man, and there's your brownies. So guys, we are done. We are done for the day. Jerry has slept the whole way through this baking. <laughs> I thought he would at least get up and sort of say hello. Are we gonna say hello, Bubba? Uh, oh. oh yes, he's being a little bit shy. So guys, thank you so much for joining me today. Jerry's come back just in time to say lots of kisses and good and goodbye and puppy yawns and stay safe. He is the cutest little button. 
You know it though, don't you? Guys, butter, oh, butter wouldn't melt, brownies wouldn't melt. I don't know what the saying is, but something along the lines of being very, 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 very cute. Someone says, post a pic of your stories of the finished result. Yes, guys, tag me and remember that hashtag, isolation creation. So show me your brownies, show me your bakes, let me know how you've got on with them. And like I said, 15 minutes, go and check them, maybe leave it a little bit longer if you want them to be a little bit more cooked all the way through. So stay tuned because we will be having some more baking because we're not going anywhere let's be completely honest until at least the is it the second of december i lose track but we won't be going anywhere for a while and i think you know christmas is coming so maybe we'll get a little bit of a festive bake on maybe some mince pies or i'm trying to think of other christmasy things but i don't have any that are coming to mind straight away so guys thank you so much for joining me this afternoon i will try and save this so that you can repeat like i said baking highlights on